Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Night Call. Last we left off, we talked to this lady. And, um, we... Oh yeah, yeah, we, uh, took a guy in a suit of armor to a convention. So that he could flirt with his, uh, rabbit friend. Or Gravia, whatever they're called. Alright. There was that lady, uh, who's the one that, like, says weird stuff a lot. I don't think we've ever uh, gotten this guy, so. How about we take him where he needs to go? Francois de la Nere. Ternis. Okay. You immediately recognize the next passenger getting in your taxi. You never watch television, rarely listen to the radio, you don't read the newspaper, and yet... You know Francois de la de... Lanare Fache, polemicist, novelist, columnist, politician, too, you think. Your passenger distractedly gives you his d address. I thought he had a pipe for a second, but no, that is a pin. Start driving. Do you vape, sir? Are you bothered by all of these protest marches? The question washes over you. You forget that during the day, people were holding protests. I work nights. Ah. Uh. He doesn't know how to follow up. The moment goes by before he yelps. Ah, see? <clears throat> There's not much chance they'd come to protest at 3 a.m., eh? It's not, really, it's not really surprising, actually. They want to make change, but only when it's convenient. Not during vacations, not on weekends, not at night. Okay, I can already kind of tell this guy might be a bit insufferable. They make fun of us in other countries, France, the land of strikes, the land of protest marches. This country is filled with jackasses, slackers, and simpletons. No, I'm not saying anything. Take the United States, for example. They have no right to strike. It's do or die. Spit flies from his mouth and disappears somewhere on the back seat. And they didn't become the most powerful country in the world by going on strike all of the time. He snickers. His notebook appears in his hand and he begins to write. Strike, protest, unrest. How the hell do you write in a car? I've never been able to master that skill. Every single time I tried to write, it would just come out horribly. While businessmen and manufacturers are working around the clock. French people should be ashamed. Yeah, this guy's a jackass. Take a look in the mirror and decide to change, to do something. They expect too much from life. They want to have their cake and eat it too and bite off more than they can chew. Catches his breath, froth begins to form into the corner of his mouth. Yeah, you're getting a little bit too into this, buddy. You're just gonna start whipping your dick out and masturbating too? This is my cab. It's not that kind of cab. And meanwhile, the world, the world keeps turning. While the strikers twiddle their thumbs, workers are working. No, struggling to get the job done, that's better. Idiotic protest marches. The Frenchest thing and the stupidest. You have to look the masses in the eyes and say, you do not own the streets. You shall not wield them like weapons. He suddenly raises his eyes and looks at you. They are unfocused and his complexion deathly pale. I'm not talking to this jackass. I once marched. It just came back to me like an old childhood memory. I can see it clearly from Versailles to Paris. I can picture the banners, the songs, and the people's faces. There were so many of us. We got up at dawn, thousands of us, and we marched towards the capital. Our pure and wholesome voices rose up. His voice shakes a bit. What were you marching for? It was a cry from the heart of the right for high-quality religious education while France was being crushed by the weight of socialism. I shouldn't have asked. I shouldn't have asked. We were being ideologically purged, completely decimated. It was the end of parochial schools. The end of our culture as we know it. His voice trembles. Yeah, no, I'm not. Your passenger slowly sinks into a strange funk. He remains that way for the rest of the ride until you reach his destination. Thank you. He sighs contentedly as you pull the taxi up along the sidewalk. Those were the days. It was a great time. The left was running the country. He leans in towards you like he's about to tell you a secret with a smirk on his face. And I mean the real left, eh? He pays and gets out of the car. You hear him talking to himself as he walks towards the front door of his building. What a lovely night. 
Good luck to you tomorrow with all these protest marches. It's going to be a messy one. He's gone before you have time to remind him you only work nights. There's a newspaper on the back seat. Your last passenger must have left it behind, or the one before. You grab it and put it away. Could come in handy. You start driving. Wow, and he didn't even tip. What a jackass. Yeah, I don't like that guy. I don't like that guy one bit. I guess his tip was his damn newspaper. Pull out the newspaper of your glove compartment and start leaping through it. Eventually something grabs your eye. It's a rather positive critique of a bar called... Oh, jeez. No, let's stop. I think I've read that one before. Wait, what did I do? Whoop. Okay. Okay, okay, never mind, we're good. Okay, we can't see Beret Boy. He's off limits. He's DLC. But we can go see this person. Man, this uh, this game kills my like throat and my mouth because there's so much talking. Port Mailot on the in the seventeenth. Thanks. Okay, it's not very far. The two women getting in the cab give you their address. They say nothing as you start the car. A faint scent of alcohol lingers in the air. They've been drinking. After a moment's silence, the younger of the two break the silence. So, what do you think about him? Who else? Of course him, not the bar. Well, I'm not sure. Strange sound escape her, escapes her, she sighs. He seems pretty... dumb. Dumb? How so? You know, dumb as a doornail, all but staring at himself in the mirror over the bar when he went to the, get drinks. But does that matter? No, not really. He's got a good body, good looking, lots of energy. He's got a sort of uh, animal vibe, a little like a panther. I really like that style. What the hell does that even mean? He's so so he's a stoop really dumb panther. Okay. You really like that style? Passengers exchange a look. The older of the two gives her friend a smile. You know exactly what I mean. They reach for each other's hands in the back seat of the car. The gesture is full of ten tenderness. A moment silent. The older woman clears her throat. What about you? What did you think of him? The young woman gives herself a minute to think. I don't know, he was heavy, too sure of himself, and he spends too much time at the gym. Did you get that bit about... Yeah, please, that innuendo about sexual performance? So I'm confused here. I can't tell if these people are, like, looking for a sex partner after they just came back from a bar and are judging this guy, or if, if it's going to be a twist and they were looking for a sperm donor because they're a uh, gay couple. Not sure. A short, mocking laugh escapes her. He was pretty heavy-handed with all his expertise on yoga and orgasms. True, though. Strong pelvic floor muscles can't hurt. Well, anyhow, he was all preachy. He should write a book, the perfect gift for your ex-husband. They burst out laughing. When the laughter dies down, the younger of the two resumes talking in a more serious tone. Anyhow, like I was saying, she looks at her friend intently. Is it really that important? I mean, we're looking for a donor. I was right! I feel smart. Not a father, not a lover, not a guardian or a godfather. Nothing but a donor. Yeah, just a donor. Or they might they might not actually be a gay couple now that I think about it. They could just... This lady might just not be able to have kids. But wants a kid. Or, no, yeah, yeah. Her husband if she has a husband, may be infertile, so they need a sperm donor. But then she would be here with her husband, I think. She casts a glance in your direction, conscious all of a sudden that they aren't alone in the cab. She goes on, lowering her voice. Yes, but still. If he had been a date, I think it would have been out... I think I would have been out of there in five minutes flat. I do yoga. I meditate six hours a day. I went to... Who the hell has time to meditate for six hours a day? Excuse me. I went to Tibet to learn the ancient art of... And serfdom did exist in Tibet before the 1950s. I checked on Wikipedia. I thought Buddhists were supposed to be curious and open-minded. He was like some old conservative dude in the body of a young Brad Pitt. Pause again. But like you were saying, does all that really matter? Her friend nods. The two young women are lost in their respective thoughts. You know, I'm not against that kind of stuff or anything. 
It's up to him. If he wants to be a drag with all that yoga and meditation bullshit, I don't have a problem with that. She gives her girlfriend a reassuring look. Yeah. Anyhow, there's no way any of that is going to be passed on to our daughter. Or our son. Her friend flashes a big smile. Well, it's going to be a girl. I can feel it. And yoga, it's not genetic. We don't have to... We'll have to ask Dr. Vidal. Yes, I bet he'd really love that. He'll think we're messing with him. He said we could ask him anything. It's going to take us for a couple of idiots. Besides, it's impossible. Pompousness cannot be passed on to children. The younger woman doesn't seem convinced and makes an exaggerated pout. So you're saying an ear for music, yes, that's passed on, but pretentiousness isn't? Exactly. So if you don't want to believe me... I mean, I would guess pretentiousness is kind of how you raise them, not really something that's passed on genetically, but whatever. She leans towards you all of a sudden. Sorry to bother you, but did you hear what we were just talking about? Some of it. No need to feel embarrassed or anything. We were talking out loud, after all. Her friend lets out a sigh. Come on, leave him alone. I was just asking. Well, right, so... My wife and I are meeting potential donors in order to, uh, conceive a baby. Her partner rolls her eyes. And we were wondering if you thought pretentiousness could be passed on to children. Genetically. Give her a look in the rearview mirror and take a moment to answer. The question is so utterly absurd. Leave him alone, Emilie. He's a taxi driver, not a geneticist. Don't get all worked up about it, I'm just asking his opinion. No, it's impossible. The passenger flops back onto the car seat. But the answer is no, is it? You're no fun. Seriously, we should have taken another cab, driven by a genetics expert. She bursts out laughing, the younger passenger leads towards you. Sorry. My partner doesn't mean anything by all that. We've had a bit to drink and it's the first time for us tonight. We're meeting donors. You pull up to the client's address and cut the engine. Be understanding. No problem. The passengers seem relieved. I'm a cab driver. I'm used to all kinds of funny stuff. Yeah, like a ghost, a cat that can like understand speech, uh, some cosplayers, a lady that just blurts out random stuff like cock shit. I can imagine. Have you been driving a cab for long? You avoid her eye. Yeah, you can say that. The passenger pays for the ride. She lets out a sudden guffaw and can't help adding. Anyhow, thanks for answering. Come on, Emilie, that's enough. As her friend tugs at her arm, Emilie starts to mumble to herself. I definitely think we should ask the doctor, just in case. We need a second opinion. You wait until the two women have entered the building, then start the car. That was an interesting one. It went on pretty long for the distance we were actually going. I don't think the distance actually matters. Hmm... I mean, I would like to pick up Hervé, but I kind of need to make some money, dude. Hmm. Let's pick her up. I think I've seen her quite a few times, but we've never actually picked her up. You slow down. The back of your neck suddenly starts tingling. Something. Someone is watching you. The feeling is... familiar. You slowly raise your head to look in the rearview mirror. He is there. So, murderer. Happy to see me again? He reveals a row of pearly whites. Too white. No worries, I won't be here long. It occurred to me. Since your wife left you, you haven't gotten laid, have you? That must be hard on morale, huh? I mean, there were opportunities. There was Cynthia, that her name? The nurse who tra uh, changed your bag of piss? He lets out a snicker. Or that chick you never called back? Hmm, what was her name again? I don't know. He glances sideways at you. You know very well who I'm talking about. Go on. His voice gets quieter, sounds far away. Say her name. What's the name of that girl you never called back? Julie. Yeah, say it louder. Julie. Exactly. He smiles. Julie. Julie. Pretty Julie. When was it? Five months back? Six, maybe? Something like that. A passenger. A smile. Numbers swapped in the taxi. A coffee. 
her hair cut a bit too short. You're into short hair, aren't you? You like it when they look like dudes, don't you? I mean, just because a girl has short hair doesn't mean, like, she looks like a dude. You lower your eyes. Bits and pieces of the coffee date start to resurface. So, why don't you call her back? Julie, she left you messages. Last syllable hangs in the air. She wanted to see you again. Julie. The last syllable shimmers. She wanted to keep conversing with you. Julie. The last syllable burns. Tell the truth. She scared me. He smacks his thigh. There it is. She scared you. Because she was. He is waiting for you to answer, but you can't get the words out. They're stuck on the tip of your tongue. Because that Julie, she was smarter than you. Because you knew she was going to talk about shit you wouldn't understand. Because you're too stupid. His posture shifts. It's almost imper imperceptible, but it's like he is melting into the back seat. You are too stupid. You lose your temper. You turn around to scream at him. Just shut the fuck up already. He has vanished. You're alone in the cab. A truck passes you. The sound of the city slowly comes back to life. A metro in the distance, a party on the first floor of a nearby building. You turn the car on, but let your fingers linger on the keys. The metal is neither warm nor cold, just reassuring. You stay like that for a second before driving off. Alright, who should we... Once again, can't do Beret Boy. Let's check in with this lady. 240-somethings are smoking a cigarette on the sidewalk. Gray suits, wrinkled shirts, they're doing overtime. Miriam Bardu she wants to go to Bastille. Your next passenger has that overtired look worn by so many young Parisian. She collapses into the back seat and mumbles an address on the other side of the city. You start driving. You dis discreetly watch her in the rearview mirror. That's kind of creepy sounding. Her face looks familiar. Maybe she's famous? Maybe you've driven her before? After a few minutes, you decide she must be a babysitter. Young, not necessarily wealthy, an expression of utter boredom on her face. You often pick up this kind, especially in a nice neighborhood. You sense your passenger wants to talk about the killer. It's simple. Okay, yeah. Okay, so she, yeah, gave me a clue. That's just always generic text, so I just skip through it. Having a good evening? She raises her head. Yeah. Yeah. She falls silent again. The silent lasts a few seconds. Out your window, Paris is just beginning to fall asleep. Occasionally you catch her glancing discreetly at you, like she maybe recognizes you too. Several minutes go by before she dares to break the silence. May I ask you something? She leans forward slightly. We, uh... You and I have already talked. Oh, I just realized it's Miriam from Bloodstain. You may not remember, but I was babysitting for an Iranian family and... She leaves their sentence hanging. Of course. She smiles, though her eyes tell you she's not entirely sure you're telling the truth. It's not all at all the same situation anyway. These are new clients. And I think I'm in love with the father. You speed up unconsciously. In love? Yes, in love. She smiles at you, then quickly, then looks quickly outside at the road. It's late. A few pedestrians are walking up the street, heads buried in their coats and scarves. I can't stop thinking about him. There's something warm about him, about the way that he moves. He's so sweet. A bit distant, maybe a bit disconnected. You think you have a chance? She shakes her head. No, not in the slightest. He loves his wife. It's obvious he loves her. I can see the love in his eyes when he looks at her. Same with his son. No, no chance whatsoever. She snickers. It's not really my style to fall in love so easily. Actually, that never happens to me. 
I've had a few boyfriends, one girlfriend, nothing serious, nothing, no real attachment. But this... She opens her eyes wide, she's speaking to herself more than you. Her fingers slide over the window as she leaves a message you can't see from the front seat. That's why I left him a message tonight. A message? Yes, a letter. That I slipped into his coat pocket. Her eyes start to wander again, she's elsewhere. He used to play rugby. He's got an amazing build. He's got a bit of a belly now, and he p pulls on his shirt buttons. Her eyes twinkle. I love it. It, it makes me melt. Aw, oh, you're one for the dad bod, huh? You hear that's in style right now. When I close my eyes, I picture him. She stops as if she'd only just realized she wasn't alone in a taxi. What are you hoping will happen? I... She stops talking, but her mouth stays open. I don't really know. I hope he'll tell me how he feels. That he'll turn me down. That things will be clear. I can't take this anymore. I'm worn out, tired of seeing him all the time without ever being able to touch him. There's one question you're dying to ask. Has he... come on to you? She smiles. No, no. It's like I don't even exist. His wife takes care of everything. She calls me, pays me, orders the cab. She's lovely. Adorable, actually. And the little kid is an angel, always smiling, always in a good mood. He... She needs a moment to complete her sentence. He barely says hello. It's like I don't even exist. She looks away. You've almost reached your destination. Silence fills the cab. The young lady leans forward suddenly like she's surprised to find herself at the end of her street, near her building. I should be ashamed, shouldn't I? Her eyes fill with tears. She is shaking a bit. You hear from the tone of her voice that she's panicking. No. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having the thoughts, but acting on them might be a little weird, but hey. Oh, yes. I know I should be. I shouldn't have. You pull it to the sidewalk while she heaves a odd sigh, a stifled sob, perhaps. I'm such an idiot. She pays her fare and gets quickly out of the cab. She practically runs to her building, unlocks the door, and throws herself into the lobby. You slowly release the steering wheel and stop to catch your own breath. You take a moment, turn the key in the ignition. Hey, we got a bunch of money, though. Alright. I think, uh... Ooh. What we got here? <clears throat> I think both for my throat... And for the sake of this video, because my throat is going out, I need some water. I think we're going to uh, go ahead and end this video off here. I think night call videos are generally going to be shorter than bloodstained ones, just because there's so much dialogue to get through. But it really takes a toll on my throat and my mouth in general, like my mouth hurts right now. So uh, I think we'll go ahead and end this video off here. I hope you have enjoyed, and I will see you next time.